you are physically part of that by the way your body adjusts to the decision of your horse. And this is horsemanship. A after you've gone through the first week of riding, not guiding, yeah. and you're, and you're, every decision, you're with the horse. Mm -hmm. In other words, you're, so if your horse is turning to the right, you're adjusting to the right, mm -hmm. so you're right in the middle of that horse. Mm -hmm. Always remember that this controls this. Mm -hmm. So if you're just looking, people say, well, well, the horse will go wherever you're looking. That's not true. Mm -hmm. I can ride a horse and do that. He won't go anywhere. He can keep <laughs> going straight. <laughs> but if I look over here, then the horse might gravitate in that direction. Yeah. You know, so when you're in the first lesson, you're, you're absorbing every decision that the horse is making. And the second week, you're participating in every, in other words, the horse turns to the right, you're going to pick up that rein. And this comes back to what we talked about yesterday of the um, platform. You have a square foot of area for your hands to work, so you're picking up that, now that picking up that rein, the horse is going to the right, you're part of that decision. The third week, you're actually creating the decision. Okay, so every time the horse on the second week, he decides to go to the right and you pick up that, you're part of that decision, he knows that you're a part of it because you've made contact, not pulling, but just made the contact to, com to go along with the decision that the horse made. Then on the third week, you're actually picking up, and he picks up, and he says, oh, that we guess we go this way. Then he goes, oh, we'll go this way. But each time we're doing that, you are physically part of that by the way your body adjusts to the decision of your horse. And this is horsemanship. So you have a history that can't be uh, really, it can be changed, but it, in some There's respect it can't be changed. Yeah. And so the, you know, you, you have that, but when you're, but this is where you will benefit from this, is just looking at the smallest decision of your horse. Your horse's head is the barometer for emotion. And if you slowly bring your legs and you see that horse's head change, you can pause there, right there to see they realize that that leg contact caused one inch movement in this head. Right. And that's where your starting point is. And, w and what you'll learn from that is what we talked about, the refinements of the decisions of the horse. In other words, the muscle decisions of the horse. And so if your horse is riding around, you'll discover, uh, you know, what you think you're asking of a horse may be miles more information than the horse needs. And he thinks, whoa, I got to get going. You know, so you're, this is where you will, you know, on the ground we see the muscle decisions in the saddle. You see some of it, but you pre predominantly feel it. Or pay attention to the refinement of the process of your horse. And this is such a subtle thing. Now, between you, you and your horse have been together for years. Right. So you have a history that can't be uh, really it can be changed, but it, in some way, respect, it can't be changed. And so the, you know, you, you have that. But when you're, but this is where you will benefit from this, is just looking at the smallest decision of your horse. Your horse's head is the barometer for emotion. And if you slowly bring your legs and you see that horse's head change, you can pause there, right there, to see, they realize that that leg contact caused one inch movement in this head. And that's where your starting point is. The repetition that we do on, on a lesson like this is actually obviously for the person. Yeah. And in reality, your horse suffers through that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, be, be, and there's just no getting around it. Uh, if you're actually, when you're working with your lessons that we talked yesterday about, if you do your five minute lesson plan, you can do five minutes all day long. As long as you're, you're keeping your information level, you know, within, a, within that bracket. I mean, as when I say five minutes, it's not on the watch necessarily, but it's just that short period of time that you're working on left-hand turns or right-hand turns or whatever it is you're working on. Then you have a pause. It's the transition back into it. Because when, when you take the resting point after you've done that, and now you transition back into the same lesson where you refer to pressure release, they don't learn from pressure. They only learn when it disappears. Well, the reason that they get it better, and you never do something else you're, in a lesson plan, you're, you're repeating whatever it is that you're there for. But the, um, the reason that, that, it, that it helps the horse is how the person 
re-engages that lesson again. So you have your 30 second, one minute rest. And now as you re-engage to start back into that lesson, that's where the horse actually learns from. So let's, and we, as we related that yesterday to uh, speed transitions where a horse will hold a gate, you know, and people work so hard at trying to keep the horse in the gate that the rider is doing more work than the horse is. You know, so they wait, the horse dies underneath of them. So now they're trying to push the horse back up. There's no education in that. But if you go through the proper transition back into that, as the transition gets easier and easier, there's less and less that has to be done to cause the transition. Now the maintenance becomes undetectable. You don't even realize you're doing it. But like when we talked about the teaching the verbal command for woe, Okay, that was keeping a 20 to 30 foot circle at a trot for a minute. All right. <clears throat> so, and your legs are constantly monitoring to the horse, but if you find yourself kicking your horse, anytime that you find yourself kicking your horse to go, eventually you're going to have to kick more or pretty soon you're going to buy spurs. Because if you think about, I want my horse to go, so you kick it. So when you kick it, what do you do? You take your legs away. So now the horse didn't go, so you kick it again and take your legs away. What does a horse learn from that? They just learn that they get, they get jabbed yeah, yeah. and they feel that they, and they move. But if you bring your legs and hold the horse, and then the horse moves forward and the legs disappear, the horse goes, oh, okay, I get that. You know, so you're teaching your horse how to move. But if you find yourself kicking your horse, I heard John Lyon say one time, if you're going to use bumping or kicking to get your horse to go, it should be so... Ease, I mean, it should be something you can do for an hour without getting tired. Okay, meaning that typically people are you know, always jabbing the horse and pretty soon the person wears out because they kick the horse so much and it still doesn't go. <laughs> okay.